Hello, so here's today's little quick project. We're making these lovely little cotton crocheted bags. They're very flexible, quite stretchy. You can put all sorts in them. We were using this one over the weekend as a soap holder on a camping trip and you can put a bar of soap in there, hang it up on a useful hook somewhere and uh, your soap dries nicely and you can take it into the shower and take it in and out. It makes a fabulous little soap dish. Um, but you can use them for all sorts of things, these bags. They're very, very flexible, very easy to use. This pattern is very versatile. You can make it as big or as small as you like. So feel free to take the pattern and adapt it to make a bag to fit whatever you want. If you want to make it to exact measurements, you may have to experiment a little, but um, it should be able to get it to almost any size and shape if you try. So we're going to start with um, some crochet cotton. Um, by the way, the pattern is available fully written out on my blog at uh, the address will be below. And uh, you see, you can see it written out. And this is just me giving you a little video on how to get started to do the bottom bit, to start your bag going. It's then very straightforward all the way up. We follow the same pattern and then a bit of finishing at the top. So it's very quick and simple to make. You can do these quite quickly. Definitely an easy one day project. So we're gonna start with a slip knot and put that onto our hook. Um, you will tell by um, my accent that I'm English, so I'm using English crochet terms here. I'll explain that when we get there because that you may or may not be familiar with the differences. For the moment, when we've got our slip knot here, we're going to do six chain stitches. That's wrapping the yarn around the hook and pulling it back through the loop. So that's one, two, three, four, moving my fingers up, five, six, and that's six chain stitches. I'm going to join that into a loop. So I put my hook through the very first stitch that I created. I'm going to take my yarn around the needle again, and then I'm going to pull it back through these two loops. That's a slip stitch, and that makes a little circle. Can you see that there? One little circle and that's the first six chain stitches. I'm going to do that again and make a second circle. Two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to go back to that same point, back where we started. <clears throat> and round the hook round and through both loops. And that's now made, can you see there, two circles, two little loops with uh, six chain stitches in each. That's my foundation stitches. We just do that the once, and now we get on with doing working the pattern. So the pattern become, becomes making a loop. So we do one, two, three chain stitches, that's going to be our loop, and then we double crochet into the first circle that we created. So the hook goes through, we wrap it round, pull the yarn through, wrap around and yarn through both two stitches. And that makes a little loop. So let's just try and see if we can see that there. That's the loop that we've just created. And what I'm going to do is actually put a marker stitch in there. You can do this with just a piece of waste yarn if you want to, preferably in a different colour. Um, and that will just identify which is that first stitch. It's just helpful to have it identified because we will we need to know where our starting point was when we get further up. OK, so we're going to do this again. One, two, three chain stitches. And then we're going to do the double crochet into this first circle. So the hook goes through the centre. The yarn goes around and we pull it back. Yarn goes around again and we pull it back through the two loops. OK, and that's a double crochet. Now, that's where we differ English and American terminology. In England, that's a double crochet that you've just seen. It's called a double crochet because one, two, three. We go through the yarn goes around once and we pull it back. The yarn goes around again the second time and we pull it through. So the fact that the yarn's gone over twice is what makes it a double crochet. However, in America, this is known as a single crochet. So just be aware of that 
It doesn't really matter what you call it, it's what you do that counts. Um, but be aware that my terminology is English and if you are watching from somewhere in North America, that might be slightly com confusing to start with. So we're just doing this. We're going to make six of these loops in the first circle. So I've done one, two, three, four, five, six. That's my six done. And now I'm going to make another three chains and I'm going to do six loops into the second circle that we created. So that's one. Okay. And that is the base pattern sorted. So we've now got 12 loops hanging off our first two circles that we created. And all we're going to do now is keep going with that pattern. So this counts as round one. Um, so I'm just now going to start round two, three chains, and then I'm going into this first hole. This is where the marker is going into that first loop with the double crochet two three and into the second loop with the double crochet and that is it that is the main pattern for the body of this bag and we're just going to keep going until we've made it long enough now to make my size of soap bag i need to go around 16 times but you can do it more or less as you choose it's just a question of how long you want your bag to be it does stretch quite a lot in the length, so you may not want it quite as long as you think you do when you start, but that's completely up to you. OK, so you just keep doing that. Keep going round, making a loop of three chain stitches and then a double crochet into the loop below. OK, so just working a little way up from here now and you can see that we've got several rows intact now and then starting to see the shape of the bag. It's curving up to make a little bag shape there. Um, this is our starter point and you can use this for counting to see how many rounds you've done. So this marker is actually sitting between the first and the second and you kind of want to count on a zigzag. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight rounds I've done so far on this, which is halfway to a soap bag. So all I need to do is just keep carrying on with this. Um, and of course, it's as it was before, one, two, three chains and a double crochet into the loop below. One, two, three, moving on to the next one. Here's the next loop and a double crochet. One thing I didn't mention up front is that we're using four ply cotton and a three and a half millimeter hook here. You can, of course, use thicker yarn. You can use thinner yarn. You can use thicker or thinner hooks, all of which will affect the size of your finished bag. So you can experiment or you can guesstimate. But this is one of the other ways that you can help to make your bag bigger or smaller. Something else you can do is by starting with more or less stitches. Here we've got, here's my first circle and that's my second circle of uh, stitches. And I did six on each, so that made 12 stitches in all. So I've got 12 loops going around the bag. Now, of course, if you did fewer loops or more loops, that would make your bag bigger or smaller accordingly. One of the reasons that I did 12 was because, well, I needed 12 loops to make, get the diameter that I wanted. And I joined them in the middle simply to stop there being one big hole at the bottom of the bag, which would have been the case had I just done 12 chains in one loop and then 12 more chain um, double crochet stitches into that. So we'd have ended up with a big hole here. I didn't want that. I wanted to keep my loops fairly close. So I, I joined it together. So I did one round of six and then the second round of six. Um, you could do several rounds of six and you'll start to get a little bit of length. So your bag will be wider, as it were, um, and sitting more like this. 
so it's it's longer and thinner um it's up to you how you make your foundation you have to think about what shape and what size you want your bag to be and put in a number of stitches accordingly anyway we're going to carry on and keep going i've just got a few more rounds to do and then i'll show you how to start finishing off the bag to make it robust and have a hanging loop So we've now done two rounds with two chains and a double crochet and we're ready to start finishing this off. Now for this particular bang I just want to make one loop as a handle. I don't want a, a big long handle or even a pair of handles and you but you can make whatever handles you want for your bags um, and I'll just show you how to make a handle and it's up to you how you finish it off. So I've already done one double crochet into this loop here below and I'm going to do a second double crochet into that loop just because we want to make a nice solid foundation for our handle. So I've got a loop with two double crochets into it and then I'm going to do without any chain stitches another two double crochet into the following loop. So I've just done four double crochets, two in one loop and two in the next loop. And that makes just a little solid tab onto which we can start building our strap. I'm now going to do one chain and turn. And we're going to work flat for a moment now. So we go back into the stitch below. We do a double crochet. And then again into the stitch below. So we're just working along and a double crochet. So that's in effect three stitches. So the chain counts as one stitch, it gives you the height, it counts as a stitch. And then we can do two further stitches, one and two. Okay, and then a chain. Oops, I think I've split the yarn there. That's never a good idea with cotton. One chain, turn, and we do two double crochets. So there's one, and two. Chain and turn and one double crochet and the second double crochet. So with three stitches per row, um, you can make this bag, uh, this handle, as long as you want it to be. Um, it can be very short, it can be very long, and you can finish it off in any manner of your choosing. So I'm just gonna make this handle, I'm gonna do about 20, 24 rows of three stitches um, to make this handle. You can make it as long or as short as you like, it is your choice. Remember, they do stretch a wee bit, not massively, but they will stretch a bit. So again, particularly if you're going to put any weight into your bag, you might want to make it a little shorter. Um, don't overestimate the length. Okay, I'm going to say that that is long enough now for my bag handle. I just want a little loop that I can use to hook. So I'm going to fold that in half and it sits down. That's my little loop that I'm going to use. So I'm going to just secure this with slip stitches. So to do that, I'm going to go through both layers of the fabric. So I don't know if you can see that. So I've gone through the end of the back of the loop and into the foundation stitches that I did in the bag. And I'm just going to pull a stitch through and then again pull it through my original. So that's one. I'm going to take it through the second, the middle stitch of the width of the strap. And wrap it around. Pull that through and then through again the stitch on the hook. And that's slip stitches and this is making a very secure way of holding the bag. Sometimes you have to help these a bit because it's a wee bit fiddly at this stage as you can see but that's just pulled that through and so now I've done three slip stitches through that's holding this loop really really tight it's not going to go anywhere and then to finish that off I'm just pulling the last stitch through 
and now I just need to cut the thread and pull that all the way through. So let's just snip that, pull that through and there we have it. That is your bag now completed. You can take the stitch markers out, sew in your ends. You should only have two, one here at the top and probably one sitting around inside. Um, and that has made a lovely little bag. So you can use that for whatever you choose. It'll be handy and helpful. And uh, may you have lots of fun making bags of all sorts of shapes and sizes and enjoy using them around your home.